Good morning, everybody, and welcome again to yet another OpenShift Commons um, briefing. I'm really happy to have with me two of our um, OpenShift Commons members from CoScale, Peter Art, I'm going to say it wrong, Arrays, and Samuel Van Dam, um, who are going to talk about monitoring OpenShift and detection performance anomalies. Um, another perspective and point of view on monitoring um, on OpenShift, and I'm really pleased that they're able to join us and, and give us their point of view. So I'm going to let Peter start us off with a bit of an overview of CoScale, and um, Samuel is going to give us a, a deeper dive and a demo into their um, their offering. The format for this is if you have questions during while people are talking, put them into the chat, um, and Samuel, Peter, or I, or one of the other folks that are on will try and answer them. Um, and once the presentations are done and the demo is done, we'll open it up for Q&A for everybody. So without any further ado, Peter, um, take it away. Okay, thank you very much, Diane. And, and you pronounced my name very well, so no problems there. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, let me say a few quick words about CoSkill first. Uh, what we do, as Diane said, we offer a monitoring solution. So we call it full stack performance monitoring. Uh, but really focused on microservices environments such as uh, in OpenShift. Um, our solution is a, a lightweight solution that's specifically for production monitoring, and we use uh, anomaly detection to find problems faster. And we offer this as uh, SaaS, as well as on-premise, and we are firmly embedded in the container ecosystem as an OpenShift prime partner, but also a uh, Docker ecosystem uh, technology partner. So with that, um, let's, let's talk a bit of how CoSkill fits in the OpenShift uh, ecosystem, and, and to do that, um, let's first have a look at the problem that, that OpenShift tries to solve. So look, when we look at the evolution of application architectures, we see a clear shift from monolithic applications that are running on physical servers or VMs in a, in a data center typically towards much more agile development these days of microservices that are supported by containers and cloud infrastructure. And as we all know, on the infrastructure side, uh, containers have become a fundamental building block for microservice. They offer an attractive way to build and package them, to ship them into production, all of this by packing all of the dependencies in, inside of our containers. Uh, but running containers in production and at scale does pose a new set of challenges compared to using them just for development. Uh, you have to start worrying about things like orchestration, automation, networking and storage, uh, security, hosting, uh, disaster recovery, uh, logging and monitoring, and general application performance. So these are all things that, that when you move into production are questions you have to ask yourself. And this is actually where Red Hat OpenShift comes in because it offers a packaged container platform built on Docker and Kubernetes and various other components to solve many of these issues that I mentioned in the previous slide. And as part of the platform, there are also some basic logs and metrics, but OpenShift also has a, a strong ecosystem around it for more advanced capabilities. And this is exactly where CoScale comes in. So CoScale adds an additional layer of more detailed container and application monitoring to OpenShift, and that helps you maintain application performance in production and lets you quickly understand when, where, and why performance problems occur. And for this reason, CoScale has also been selected as an OpenShift prime partner for monitoring because we add significant value to OpenShift, letting you deploy applications in production with the right performance guarantees. Now, let's look into the monitoring aspect in a bit more detail. I think we all realize that monitoring is an important part of running an application in production, yet it seems that many people are still struggling with this when it comes to containerized application. And this is data from a recent survey by Cloud Foundry on the top challenges when it comes to running containers and microservices in production. And we can clearly see that, that monitoring is pretty high up here, just after container management, actually. Um, and monitoring and troubleshooting microservices indeed poses some interesting challenges as this uh, funny tweet uh, mentions. So let's look at these challenges in a bit more detail. So the first obvious observation is, of course, that uh, the number of containers is much higher than the number of servers. So the number of instances to monitor increases by an order of magnitude when we use containers. In a typical customer environment that we see, customers use up to 10 or 20 containers per host, but we have even seen cases with up to 100 containers. So this is an immediate multiplication of the number of metrics to monitor. The second aspect is that containers can be very short-lived, So this dynamic aspect also introduces challenges uh, in rapidly picking up metrics from containers, setting relevant alerts, uh, as well as understanding the impact of container life cycles on performance. A third aspect is when we compare container environments with monolithic applications, we see a much larger diversity 
of application technologies used across containers where, pe where people typically use the technologies that best suited for uh, the use case of a particular microservice. So this all comes together in an overload of metrics to monitor and alert on. Um, if we look a little bit closer on how we would traditionally monitor a monolithic application and compare that to a microservices application, we see that in a monolithic application, we typically have three monitoring components. This is perhaps a bit simplified, but at the infrastructure layer, there are traditional system monitoring tools where you look at typical resource metrics. At the application layer, typically you would use an APM tool um, where you gain insight in the internals of your monolithic application. And finally, uh, the end user experience is typically monitored as well using some form of browser instrumentation or another technique. Now, for microservices, however, on a platform such as OpenShift, we see that an additional layer is introduced and we now have a lot of smaller and lightweight and loosely coupled application components uh, that we need to monitor. So in order to understand application performance, we do not only need to monitor these container instances themselves, but also the way that they are orchestrator, uh, orchestrated, the way that they are tied to services, and finally also the services running inside the containers. And this is actually where most APM tools start to have difficulties. And this is also the opinion of uh, Cameron Haidt, who's a research VP at, at Gartner. And in one of his recent reports, he also claims that these new application architecture, including containers and microservice, are really stressing the capabilities of APM tools. Now, why is this really? Well, first of all, most APM tools, they were designed maybe five or 10 years ago, uh, specifically for monolithic applications, uh, for example, written in Java, .NET, and so on. And because of the nature of monolithic applications, understanding what's really going on inside your application and interaction between application components requires you to have code level visibility of the application. Now, when we compare that with containerized environments, we see that the application is put up in a lot of smaller microservices, each running a more limited amount of code, uh, as I said, typically using different uh, technologies. In such cases, code instrumentation is, is much less needed, and it's actually more helpful to understand how each microservice is behaving and what are the interactions between the microservices. And this is especially true since containers are lightweight instances, so you don't want to use a heavyweight monitoring tool to monitor them. In fact, most of these heavyweight monitoring tools, they will require you to install an agent inside your container, and this is really an anti-pattern since containers should be limited as much as possible to a single process. And you don't want your, to pollute your container uh, by packaging uh, an extra agent in there. And then the final aspect is that most existing tools, they have a hard time keeping up with uh, dynamic environments, uh, especially if they use static alerting. But I'll, I'll tell more about that a bit later. So if you are looking for a monitoring tool for a containerized environment, what visibility should it really give us? So what metrics should we monitor? At the host level, we obviously still want to monitor resource metrics, typical things, CPU, memory, disk, and so on. Um, Typically, you would use an orchestration tool uh, in case of Kubernetes. It's a flavor of Kubernetes, but there are other orchestrators out there. And also at this level, you want to monitor uh, things such as the amount of containers, how they are set up, relationships between services and containers. And this gives you more service-oriented visibility, like which container runs which service or which containers are impacted when a particular service starts degrading. Um, at the container layer itself, we also want to keep track of relevant resource metrics um, CPU memory and so on, and as well as when these containers are started and stopped, so their life cycles. And it doesn't stop at resource metrics, of course. We also want to know uh, the requests uh, going in and out of our containers, as well as application metrics from those particular services that are running in our containers. And these could be things like Nginx or, or Redis or, or MySQL. So all of these services you also want to monitor quite in detail. And then finally, our application uh, will serve some end users and ultimately also a business. Um, and we also want to monitor relevant metrics from, from that perspective. These could be things like page load times or conversion rates and things like that. So this, those are uh, the, the, the set of metrics that, that you want to monitor. And how does CodeScale handle that? So what's our approach to, to monitoring um, microservices and containers? Well, we run one lightweight agent per host. It can be either installed directly on the operating system or in a privileged container. And with that agent, we can get a, a server resource metric at the OS level. We can also get a container and cluster resource metrics, typically using the APIs from uh, Docker and the orchestrators and OpenShift. Now, there are other tools that, that do that as well. Uh, but CoScale actually goes one step further because we have a very rich library of plugins for various application components. And we can configure these in such a way that, first of all, 
any new container that runs a service for which we have a plugin will automatically get monitored when that container starts. And secondly, we will get very application-specific metrics from these containers without the need to install an agent in the container. And this is a quite unique capability. Uh, in addition, CoSkill also has a, a real user monitoring component where we use a little JavaScript snippet to get uh, end user experience metrics from the, from the web browser. We also allow you to track unlimited custom metrics. We have various ways of doing that. Um, your scripting plugin or logging, uh, leveraging our APIs. And on all of these metrics, and this is the important part, we run automated anomaly detection that lets us quickly uh, detect abnormal behavior. Final point, we also track relevant infrastructure changes. This provides extra context in what's going on in your environment. Things like container lifecycle events or, or, or events from your orchestrator, but also things like new deployments or configuration changes. These are all things that are happening in your environment and they can have an impact on performance. And by also capturing these events with various integrations that we offer, we offer extra context uh, in, in, in those kind of things. So this picture gives a visual representation of the CoSkill platform with our uh, lightweight agent and uh, all of the plugins. Well, not actually all, but uh, representative part of the plugins that we uh, support, uh, the real user monitoring component, uh, and the integration for various custom metrics and events. And with this data, we can obviously create um, nice dashboards. We are a monitoring tool after all. Uh, but also automatically detect uh, abnormal behavior using our anomaly detection. So anomaly detection, I want to spend a little bit more time on it since it is one of the differentiating features of, of CoScale. Um, and to illustrate again why it's so important to use automated techniques uh, such as anomaly detection, uh, just have a look at the explosion in the amount of metrics to monitor when we compare a traditional monolithic application with a containerized environment. Basically, the amount of container acts as a, as a multiplicator in the amounts of metrics. And we can easily end up with, uh, in this example, uh, where we have 10 containers per host, uh, more than 1,000 metrics to monitor per host uh, compared to 100 in a traditional environment. Now, if you multiply that again with the amount of hosts, you can see that it quickly becomes unmanageable. Um, certainly, if you use classic techniques such as static alerts. Now, I'm not saying uh, static alerts don't work or, or are bad. Um, they, they, they actually work very well for well understood consolidated metrics. Um, for example, number of visitors on your sites or some business metric that you have a good hold on, but not necessarily for those thousands of metrics that are coming uh, from your containers and, and microservices. Um, and these are not the only limitations, the, the amount of data. There are other limitations as well, like how to deal with dynamic in, in environments that, that, that uh, would require you to constantly reset or reconfigure your alerts. Also, seasonality is hard to handle with static alerts, so you would have to start writing some uh, complex alert expressions uh, based on time. And uh, in fact, the same goes for correlations between metrics. So if we look at the definition of an anomaly, which is basically a deviation from what is normal or expected, uh, this means that if we can get pretty good at predicting expected behavior, we can also get pretty good at detecting anomalies. And this is basically what we have focused uh, on at, at CoScale. Um, we will basically look at the historic behavior of all the metrics we monitor and make a prediction based on that. Uh, we also include a fair amount of domain knowledge for that. And if we see a deviation from this expected behavior, we'll basically give it an anomaly score, uh, depending on how large the deviation is. And then we will alert when this anomaly score exceeds, exceeds a certain threshold value. Now, this is a simple explanation. There's a lot more um, sophisticated things going on, but this is the, the basic concept uh, that, that we apply. Now, what we will also do is we will group metrics on which anomalies are occurring at the same time to give you really a better understanding on what's happening in your environment. So uh, this is an example screenshot, but I think Samuel will, will illustrate it a bit better in the demo later, where we see that uh, on our anomaly timeline, we have different metrics at the server, user, and business level showing up normal behavior. And basically, we see that uh, certain services, certain um, containers are overloaded. Uh, this crease, creates an increase in, in latency on our uh, website. We also see that there's more views on our website. And basically, also, our conversion rate is impacted. So this consolidated view, uh, giving you all metrics in um, together gives you really a good um, view on what's happening in, in your environment and a lot of context to understand uh, what, what the performance problem actually is. Um, we're also uh, um, applying outlier detection, which is a different form of anomaly detection, where we look specifically at metrics from 
similar instances in a cluster, uh, such as containers that are supported by the same uh, or supporting the same service. So if we see any containers uh, with a different behavior compared to the rest of the cluster, we can also alert on it. Um, in this example, we highlight containers with increased memory usage. Um, in, in general, this kind of outlier detection requires less of a learning period than anomaly detection on time series data. But the basic ID really remains the same, that uh, you can quickly detect changes in, in performance without having to set up a lot of manual alerts. That's the basic uh, premise of, of CoScale. So I'm going to end uh, my part of the, of the presentation here. I'm sure you would like to see how this all works in, in practice. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Samuel, to give us a demonstration. Okay, thank you, Peter, and hello, everyone. Let me quickly share my screen. I think um, Peter might have to stop sharing his screen. Right, how do I do that? Share screen. I think oh. it also... Normally, you should be able to see the CoScale dashboard now. It looks wonderful, yep. thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so yeah, welcome to the CoScale applications. Uh, if you create a trial uh, with us, this is one of the first screens you will see after creating your account. Uh, it shows you the four main components of the CoScale uh, platform. So we have our real user monitoring, as Peter talked about. We have integration with a lot of third-party services. Um, we also have a lot of ways to uh, do really custom integration, both with config management, as we have a command line tool, an API, uh, and other methods of really binding your system together with our monitoring. But today, I'm mostly going to talk about the agent, because the agent, of course, will be used to get server data and specifically uh, for this demo, uh, open shift information and Docker information. So I'm gonna click through and uh, I arrive on our agents page. So this is the page where you would see all your servers and all uh, the agents you've configured. Here you can see I have one agent, the OpenShift agent, and it has uh, three servers. Uh, well, it's installed on three machines. I have a nope shift master and two nodes. Creating a CoScale agent uh, is a really simple process. So we support Linux windows, um, most popular Linux flavors. I'm gonna select Red Hat 7 uh, for now. And if you click next step, you get a list of all the plugins that Peter was also talking about. So you probably recognize here uh, the most popular open source tools uh, and specifically, uh, we, of course, have support for OpenShift and um, Docker, but I'm going to show you the doc uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the Docker configuration a little bit later. Now, because I've selected an OpenShift plugin or a Docker plugin, more specifically, I get two options of installing a CoScale agent. Uh, one of those is uh, through package management, so I get an RPM which I can then install on the server. But because an, um, OpenShift usually runs in very dynamic environments where new minions can be started at any moment, uh, we also have the option to um, start our agent as a privileged container. Now, specifically for OpenShift, we have a, a configuration available that will allow you to just add um, a daemon set to your OpenShift environment, and then the agent will automatically be deployed on every server that's also in OpenShift. So um, here I've quickly opened the, the OpenShift uh, web interface, and the CoSkill project contains my agent, and you see I have uh, another four servers running each one of our agents. And I'm gonna quickly also show you the, the configuration for it. So. Here is the daemon set, and uh, here we can see the config then. So this is really a powerful system because uh, now if you scale out your environment or if yeah, maybe one of your servers crashes, the agent will automatically uh, scale with you or restart when needed. 
Now, what, what information do we get from the CoSkill agent? Peter also mentioned it already a little bit uh, in the, the slide. So uh, because OpenShift in the background runs a Kubernetes environment, you're going to see a lot of the same concept. So we have replication controllers. Uh, well, we get the data from replication controllers. We get the data from the services. We get all the containers that are running and where are they running. Um, we also have a very powerful event system. So here, for example, you can see our replication controller overview. And here, every time you have an event of insufficient replicas, uh, meaning that probably a container has crashed somewhere, uh, you can clearly see this with our events. Uh, and, and you can go and research what happened. Below, we have um, a little bit our container overview. So once on a service level and once on a host level. Um, so you see here I have five replication controllers, some running five containers. I can clearly see which are more the helper containers uh, started by Kubernetes. And you may have noticed here that we uh, sometimes have a different color for a container. Um, this is because you can select a metric for each of these widgets and then set the threshold, uh, which you choose yourself. I think in this case, we've selected 30 and 50% CPU usage. And then depending on the value we get back from the container, we're going to color code uh, the container here. So this way you can quickly see if some containers are maybe using too much CPU, as in this case, it's clear that we have 97% CPU usage. We might be impacting all the other containers that are running uh, on the same machine. So this really gives you a little bit of an, an overview of the entire environment. Now, the next dashboard is a little bit more focused. So uh, this dashboard, as you can see here at the top uh, with our dimension system, is uh, well has just the data from the MongoDB replication controllers. I can quickly change this dashboard also if I wish, um, if I want to see data from other uh, replication controllers. But um, here on this dashboard, I get a little bit of information on the container lifecycle. So I can see when containers were started, when they were stopped, what the exit code was, uh, also in which on which machines are they running, uh, what the CPU usage is, uh, memory usage, network, uh, received and sent. Here again, you can set your own thresholds. So it's very a very visual way of seeing if, if the container is performing as you would expect and then we have the the event system that we talked about already so every time a container is started it's gonna first send a ready signal and then a running signal saying okay um, i'm ready to get traffic uh, from other servers in this case uh, the next dashboard I want to show you is a little bit more general. So this is a dashboard made by one of our customers um, and they've chosen to put a lot of their services together. So they run a microservice environment and they have a, a comment API, so a comment microservice, a product API and a checkout API all running on, in OpenShift. And they've chosen to put this information um, very clearly on their first dashboard uh, that they open. So this is their home dashboard. Now, we also have some information coming from our real user monitoring. And I want to show you a little bit how easy it is to go from that top level view here, just showing me the page load time, it could also be just a service, uh, all the way down to a server level or a more detailed view. So let's say I see that my page load time is a little bit too high. I can click through on this, this tile, we call it. And I arrive on a dashboard that was created specifically with real user monitoring information. So I get the page views coming from there. I get the page load time. I get my most popular pages and um, my, the slowest pages. Now, it might be here that you see another page that is a little bit too slow. You can click through again. And you arrive on a, on a dashboard just showing you information uh, of that page, page views, page load time, and the page resources. Um, here again, you have the option to click through once more because this is still the front end of the user. And now I've clicked and I arrived on the microservice level. So I get the web request rate from the containers that are um, delivering this web request. I get the latency and I get the error rate. This, just to show you how easy it is to link dashboards together and, and make a, 
a system that shows you the information you need. Here also we have a, a couple the alerts that were uh, in this time frame, the anomalies, free memory, CPU load. And then uh, another way of using our event system. So here um, this customer has integrated with our MailChimp integration. So every time they send a mailing campaign, it's going to be added to CoScale and they'll be able to link it to performance problems, maybe, or uh, changes in the metrics. They do the same for software deployment. So every time they do a new software deploy, they can clear, clearly see when it happened and maybe what the impact was. So further, so um, I've mentioned that we gather metrics from containers. We, of course, also gather metrics from um, more an operating system level. So CPU load, free memory, network traffic and this throughput again. Um, here, I want to show just um, a small detail. Peter has mentioned that CoScale is a lightweight monitoring platform. So we aim to have a very low resource usage on the servers that we are monitoring. And because of that reason, we've made certain decisions uh, in our design process. Um, for example, we're not going to push the CPU load uh, or the CPU usage of every single process running on the machine. But sometimes that's very valuable information. Uh, here I, I see a clear spike in my CPU and I would like to know what happened at this time. Um, it's for this reason that we added the forensic system. So the forensic system is uh, a small lightweight anomaly detection running in the agent. And when there is a sudden change, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a snapshot, take a picture of the system and send it back to our platform. And then I can research, okay, this spike was caused by the Docker daemon uh, probably deploying a new image or something else. Now, I want to jump back to the agents page because I, I said I wanted to, I was going to explain our Docker monitoring a little bit more, uh, especially because we do in container monitoring. So the idea there is um, the plugins you saw um, in the beginning that are available if it was just installed on the host's operating system. Uh, all these plugins can also be used to monitor uh, what's happening inside the container. So let's say if I have an, an Apache con an, a container running with the Apache software, uh, I can get metrics from that Apache and, and uh, monitor actually how it's performing. The way we do this is uh, I'm going to quickly open the configuration of our Docker image. Uh, our Docker plugin, excuse me. So here uh, you see the configuration of uh, the Docker plugin and you see I have four uh, Docker images configured. So the way it works is that um, if you install our Docker plugin, it's going to scan the server it's running on and it's going to see, okay, which containers are running here. And then it's going to match that list with the configuration I set here. So when it sees an Elasticsearch image, with, uh, in this scale case, a wildcard tag, uh, but this can also be, of course, a normal tag. So here, in, in the case of memcached, I just match on the latest. Uh, it's going to start a CoScale plugin within the container itself. Uh, and here, very important to note, this is not, uh, you don't have to install anything in the container beforehand. Uh, no, we inject this the moment that we see the container, we inject that plugin, it's going to start gathering data and it's sending it back to the agent that's running on the host operating system. Now, this has two very um, good advantages. So the first thing is that it scales with your containers. If you're going from one Elasticsearch container to five, that's not a problem. Our Docker plugin is going to detect that. It's going to start four more Elasticsearch plugins and the data is going to be gathered. And you're going to be able to see the data coming from each individual container or all together uh, on an image level or on a tag level. So uh, we really allow you to uh, compare data also from uh, previous versions to the new version. So it's really a powerful system. And the second advantage is that because we start that plugin within the container itself, the configuration becomes a little bit easier. So um, 
to give you an, an example, so we have the configuration for an Nginx plugin. CoScale gets a lot of this information from APIs and status calls, so we need access to the Nginx uh, global status page or status page. And you, you might have noticed here that I use localhost. I hope it's clear on your screen, but uh, I don't uh, mount any, well, I don't need to mount any ports. I don't, uh, and don't need to do any special configuration to be able to monitor this image. No, this localhost, because we start the plugin within the container, is just the container itself. So this port is just accessible, in this case 8000, uh, without any additional configuration. The other advantage there is uh, this is the same for file systems. So you don't uh, need to mount any local disks uh, on your host machine to be able to access this, this uh, access log. No, this will just work. And the moment your container stopped, this access log will be deleted, but that's fine because CoScale has at that moment already gathered all the information from it. Really. Uh, a really handy way to, to monitor uh, live running containers. Now, I want to show you a couple of dashboards that, that show a little bit the, the advantage of having this system. So here I have a memcache dashboard. Uh, I have general metrics coming from mem, uh, memcache, so connections to memcache, the network bytes received, the commands, and the hits and misses. Now, um, you see that the commands had some changes in its metric. So we used to be around 800 commands a second, and we dropped down to 400, but we had some spikes, which is a, a little bit strange. So what I can do is I can zoom in a little bit, and I can, I can clearly see here that two containers running, and all of a sudden one of the containers um, started misbehaving a bit because it crashed. So the other container had to um, handle a lot more data. And if I look at the events, I'm going to see uh, there were too few replicas. So one was missing. A little bit later, a container was started. So we see the new line popping up. Here, no manual action on, on my side was required. So I didn't have to change this dashboard. The new container just popped up. And we decided to scale it up a little bit. So we added some more containers. And if I zoom out again, you'll see. Uh, replica scaling, so we scaled up from 8 and then to 10. Then the other example is our Nginx. So here again, we get a general dashboard, um, which you will also get if you create a CoScale application um, with the amount of connections, the amount of containers, the average latency, the request rate, and a, a nice heat map that shows me the performance of my containers over time, so I can quickly identify maybe those that are not performing as I'd like. And then here we have a, a more dashboard that shows me really information coming from um, yeah, the, the latency of my website and the latency of all my requests. So here we have really a lot of containers delivering my website. You see at one point we added some new containers because there seems to be that there was an issue. This were probably handled by OpenShift itself. Uh, and then these new containers uh, yeah, start delivering the website to the customer and the data starts rolling in. Okay. Um, so now the last thing I want to show you, because Peter also mentioned this, and I think it's a very good point that in, in these new environments, you have so many metrics to watch and so many containers um, that it becomes very difficult to set meaningful static alerts that don't overflow your mailbox, but at the same time, yeah, you still need some warning that something happened in your system. And there, we think that the anomaly detection can really add to these container uh, environments. So um, Peter also showed this. Uh, this is the same uh, anomaly as we saw in the presentation. So we, did, we have the anomaly on three levels. Uh, we group it so you can see uh, here there was anomaly on latency. Uh, we had a couple of anomalies on the request rate, and then we had an anomaly on uh, CPU of those both servers. I'm going to show some examples uh, coming from containers, but just to to show you the where the screenshots from from Peter came from. So we can see uh, that the latency of um, my website went up. 
we have a nice dot plot um, if you want to look. So here you can see the the um, yeah how much how many of my users are in which level of page load time, and we can clearly see that there is a new group of users that is experiencing a, a lot slower page load times than normal. Then we have uh, a lot more visitors, so we went from 0 0.5 to 1.7 visitors, uh, and a little bit. This is on different pages, by the way. It's something to note um, that CoSkill automatically builds a tree of your application, and it's going to do anomaly detection on all individual pages. So if one page changes, you'll still be able to see this with the anomaly detection. And then we also have an anomaly on, on CPU usage. And um, yeah, you can clearly went from 30 to 50%. And this is, I think, a very Good example, because normally you wouldn't set a, a static alert at, at 50 or 55%. You would set it at 70, 80, or 90 even. Uh, but still, this is an abnormal behavior of your server, and you would like to see, okay, what happened at this time. With the forensics, I can then uh, quickly research that Nginx was using more CPU, and this, of course, makes sense. I have more visitors, so my web server has more work. A different example, but more on a business level. So uh, we did a large proof of concept with a customer in the US. They sent us a lot of their business data and uh, our anomaly detection was applied to it. And we were able to find small issues uh, like here in this case, where the amount of orders per minute all of a sudden dropped. Uh, and if we zoom in a little bit, you'll see that it dropped to almost zero. Um, so this was a, a big impact for them. Um, with the anomaly detection, they were able to identify and fix it pretty quickly. Now, as a last example, um, I have two anomalies here, uh, one on a user level, so this is the request rate, and then one uh, on a server level. So I'm going to quickly open uh, the user one. So we went from around 9.5 requests to 14, and you see the anomaly detection system was uh, able to quickly identify this. And if we take a look at the anomaly on CPU usage, this was detected on an Apache container, and then yeah, this is a very clear anomaly where we go from 0% uh, or very low CPU usage to very high in a very short time. But again, it was automatically detected. So it really um, proactively helps you finding issues in your environment, some issues where you might have not set the static alert yourself. Um, now, this is all the examples uh, I have to show. So I'm going to give the word back to Peter now. And we, we have a few questions that have been coming in. And um, Frederick, uh, Rick Bosch, I think our, your CTO has also joined in the call, so I'm going to un unmute him as well. And he has to unmute himself in order to answer questions. But um, thanks, uh, Samuel. Uh, uh, that's that's a great um, overview of, of how CoScale works and showcases the anomalies. Um, let me see if I can find the, the first question we had um, from Lucas Ponce was asking about custom metrics from apps and are are they supported? Um, as a custom plugins, because um, you have a lot of um, pre pre-configured plugins in there. But if someone wants something specific for their own apps, how how would somebody go about customizing a plugin or creating a custom plugin? I think Fred will take the question, or is it clear? Uh, go ahead, Samuel. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly share my screen again. So. Um, I can show you uh, in our documentation. So, uh, as mentioned, CoScale has a couple of ways of pushing custom metrics into our system. Um, we provide two plugins for that. So, we have a generic script plugin. Um, this is uh, just, yeah, you could write your own script or uh, add it to your, your server. Um, sorry, to your binary, and then CoScale or the agent will run this script every minute or every five minutes. This you can set up yourself, and then um, you can push data back to CoScale this way. So this is really more of a, a pull. Uh, you can also push metrics with our command line tool. 
So together with our agent, uh, if you install it as a package or we have a container available, um, we uh, well we have a com container available with a command line tool. With that, you can easily push data. So I can probably show it uh, after, and then we also have a plugin um, which is we call our log plugin, and this is a really powerful tool. If you have existing log files that contain information that you need, could be a latency or just a number, you can use um, regular expressions to get that information out of there. So this is uh, really an easy way to uh, get data without having to do large changes to your environment. And then we also have the option to push th data through StatsD and uh, a core skill API. If you really want to go uh, and do a custom integration, we have a very mature API available uh, that you can use. And I'm going to quickly show the, the command line tool. So here's an example uh, of the command line tool uh, to insert data where this is the metric name, this is the level, and then the value. Um, and now, yeah, just to show you. You can find more information on this in our documentation, just docs.coskill.com. Perfect. All right. And another right. question. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Peter. Um, I just wanted to say there's also a few good examples on our blog uh, for uh, working with custom metrics. And as part of that question, I also saw that this person asked, uh, to monitor specific transaction endpoints, uh, like a specific request. And for that, it's also worth noting that we recently introduced a new feature, which is uh, basically active checks that you can um, really put in, in our plugins to say, okay, I want to monitor this specific request, a specific uh, API call or specific um, uh, query on my database. And, and that's kind of an active check system that we have also introduced recently. And then there's also more information on that on our blog. So definitely go and check out uh, our blog. Um, and the, the other question, um, and, I, and Frederick sort of answered it in, in the, the chat as well, it was um, whether or not the an anomalies are based on st standard derivatives or are configurable via thresholds and predicted baselines. Maybe um, if you could talk a little bit about this, I think this is an important piece. Um, yeah. about okay, so this is Frederick. Uh, I, would like to like, I would like to elaborate a bit on that. So our anomaly detection technique is basically a fully automatic technique that will take your metrics, it will see how the metrics behave, and based on that it will create a model. Let's say, for example, a CPU usage um, is tightly related mostly with the request rate that is coming in. Then we will create a model that contains both the CPU and the request rate, and we will make a baseline of that that is based on um, that goes with time. So you have the per hour um, derivatives, you have per uh, per day, and so on. And so we'll create a different uh, type of uh, analyses for each of these metrics. Like for example, a memory usage is not that dynamic. You typically see it rising and going down, but it's not as fast as, for example, CPU usage. So it's a completely different model that we use then. So we will automatically detect based on the metric, based on the data, which which model is most fit for this type of data, and then generate the analysis based on that. So there is no configuration needed to be done. You don't have to set threshold, or you don't have to specify what your uh, metric will look like. It will be automatically detected, and we will have uh, an automatic analysis for that. Wonderful. All right, and I think that is, um, I'm wondering if there's anything else. Uh, it looks like that's all the questions that they had. Um, uh, there was a question um, that, that we answered offline, which was actually a good question. I would like to, uh, to answer it in public, which is regarding our architecture and um, where we store data. So um, we want to be very open about our architecture. So I opened a slide here. So uh, basically, we do use very modern application components. Our metric data is stored in, in Cassandra. Event data is stored in Elasticsearch, also some, some metadata in Postgres. Um, our, our entire uh, architecture is, is such that it can be perfectly horizontally scaled. Uh, it can also be deployed on-premise in a dockerized environment. Um, so that, that also makes it very easy to set up and, and scale. We recently even did a pro proof of concept where we uh, actually handled over a, a million uh, data points per second. So uh, that's some more context on, on our architecture. Wow, very nice. Um, in, almost, not infinitely scalable, but very nice. Uh, <laughs> and I think 
think that answers maybe Waleed's question about where the metric data, data stores. Uh, exactly. Like it was Cassandra yep. and the Elasticsearch store. So that's using some of the latest and greatest fun bits that are also part and parcel of OpenShift as well. So we're real familiar with a lot of that. And give everybody a few more questions, see if there's any other questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Peter, Sam, or Frederick? Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for attending. And if you're interested to, to try out our solution um, on OpenShift, so I said we were our prime partner and our solution is available for everybody. Just go to coskill.com free trial and, and you can try it out for yourself uh, during 30 days. And uh, if you have any further questions, uh, our contact details are here at the bottom of the slide. So feel free to reach out. All right. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to um, hearing more from you and um, getting some more use cases and stories um, as well. Uh, there's going to be an upcoming OpenShift Commons gathering in Berlin on March 28th, um, co-located again with KubeCon. So we'll hopefully have some CoScale representatives there as well, and um, people can come and ask you questions in person and or as part of one of the special interest groups, because I think there's enough interest in monitoring probably to kick off a monitoring special interest group um, at the rate we're going. And um, that would be, a one, it'll be wonderful to see everybody in person in the EU again. So thanks again um, for joining me, Peter and Frederick for popping in as well. Um, and we'll let you all get back to your days. And this, uh, if you can send the slides along, we'll add them into the blog post and this will get reposted on Monday um, and on the blog.openshift.com. Thanks all. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.